Hi, I'm Callie Vern, and welcome to the Beyond All Reason Single Player Scenarios Guide. We're going to look at TikTok, which is the 18th of the scenarios, and this one's going to be on Brutal, which gives the enemy an extra 50% resources, which won't really matter too much because resources are pretty much infinite on this map anyway. This map's called Speed Metal. You can build metal extractors anywhere you like, and they'll actually give you something like 30 metal a second. You start off with a few beholders to give you vision. You start off with eight solar collectors and your commander and a little light laser turret over here. Your opponent starts with a few simple defenses and four behemoths. Now these behemoths will slowly walk across the map. They'll get to your base and when they get to their base, they'll annihilate you. So the idea is you need to win the game before that happens. There's three ways to do this. There's the proper way, the silly way and the really silly way. So let's have a quick check out of all those methods. So the proper way is to take out the enemy while the behemoths are halfway through the map and your enemy hasn't really got anything. The trick here is to try and scale up your economy really quickly, but you can't spend too much time building things like construction bots and construction turrets because you've only got between maybe 7 and 10 minutes depending on luck on how long it takes the behemoths to actually get over to your base. So I'm going to open up with a couple of mechs, which give me 63 in total, and a bot lab. And then I'm going to get a construction bot out. Let's speed this up. Now I'm going to run low on power. I've decided to go with solar panels because I've got hardly any power. Wind's a lot better, but if you've got no energy to build them, then you might as well build solar panels when the metal's free. But I will be switching over to wind turbines now. I'm going to get a Tech 2 bot lab out straight away. My commander's going to keep building wind turbines, and I'm going to get some construction turrets up. I don't want too many, but I do need some. You have to be very careful on energy on this map because you've got so much metal it can be really easy to forget about the energy. So you need to keep building windmills all the time with your commander, otherwise you'll just run low on resources. My commander's going to get some more mechs up just because he's doing nothing really much at the moment. And I'm going to keep going and get some construction turrets up. Now I need more windmills, so I'm going to send a bunch of these construction bots over here to build some windmills. Now you will get attacked by a few simple things early on in the game, so I'm going to get a couple of chainsaws up to protect against air, and I'm going to build a dragon's claw in the centre just to stop anything getting through and hurting me while I'm building up. Then I'm going to start cranking out fat boys as soon as I've got 12 construction turrets. I'm going to get a construction aircraft out and go into a T2 aircraft plant, get some more construction turrets up. At this point, the behemoths are at halfway through the map, so they're slow, but they will get here. Once my T2 aircraft plant is up, I'm going to build abductors, and I'm going to build as many of them as I can, and as many fat boys as I can, before the behemoths get to my base. I've built a couple of butlers so they can help me build some more windmills, because I am struggling with energy here a little bit. I've got three chainsaws, one dragon's claw for defense, and now I'm getting abductors and fat boys. And as soon as I can, I'm going to use an abductor to pick up a fat boy and put them down over here somewhere safe. Well, not put them down, but just station them over here somewhere safe. The time it takes for the behemoths to get here is variable. So with this tactic, you're just going to build as many fat boys and as many abductors as you can. You might only be able to build five or six. You might be able to manage a lot more, but we have to do what we had to do. We build as many as we can. The thing is, the longer this goes on, the more the enemy will build their base up. So even if you're forced to go early, it doesn't matter too much because that just means the enemy will have less stuff. I've also picked my commander up so he's ready to go, because if my commander dies, I lose the game, so I need to keep my commander safe. Now I've got plenty of adductors, I'm going to build a few high winds because I need to make sure that there's no aircraft going to shoot me down. So I'm going to fly a patrol of high winds down the bottom of this side of the map to make sure there's no enemy aircraft. But as soon as I've got a fat boy ready, I will build another abductor and I will pick him up. And now the behemoths have arrived. Now there's nothing we can really do to stop four behemoths. So what we're going to do is get the hell out of dodge. I'm going to take all my abductors and all my fat boys and I'm going to get out of this base very quickly before the behemoths kill me and my commander. And then I'm just going to let them go through and kill all of this stuff. I don't care about any of this stuff now. This stuff doesn't matter. And this is our main assault force. We managed to build 12 abductors, so that means we've got 11 fat boys and a commander to win the game with. Our high winds are going to get shot down, that's fine, but they're getting shot down by anti-air defence rather than planes. 
The main thing is we don't have any planes shooting our abductors. Now the reason I use abductors, the T2 transport, is because their EMP is really useful for this. It's very powerful and it will do a lot, disabling a lot of these defences. Then I'm going to drop all these fat boys in the base. And the fat boys are going to blow up everything in this immediate area and give me a bit of space to work. While the abductors will go through and start firing EMP blasts at anything they fancy. They are a bit low on energy but they'll still get some shots off which is useful. As soon as I see the enemy commander I'm going to dump all the fat boys shots on him and win the game. Without having to fight the behemoths at all. And easy as that. So this is your tactic for this game. You need to build up some forces fast with some transport, get to the enemy base, drop on it, destroy it while the behemoths are over here or somewhere in the middle of the map. Okay, so that's the proper way to do it. Now let's look at a sillier way. Okay, so this is the sillier way to do it. This time I'm opening up with a few wind turbines which is definitely smarter. I'm going to get a couple of metal extractors because I don't need any more and then I'm going to do a kind of similar thing as before. But this time we're not going to get an air plant. What we're going to do is we're going to crank out a load of butlers and make them make a million windmills. Then we're going to build a load of construction turrets in the middle of the base and start getting a pulsar up. Then we're going to get lots of pulsars up. We're just going to expand as quickly as we can using the fact butlers are really good at building windmills to build lots of windmills to give us lots of power. Then what we're going to do is when these four behemoths come up all these pulsars won't be able to kill four behemoths. But our commander is covered by a jamming tower and he's cloaked. They can't see him, he's got a D-gun. So what we do is we kill the behemoths with the commander. They'll get one shot like anything else. Although the last behemoth decides that discretion is the better part of Valor because I think 21 pulses will probably kill it before it gets close enough to do us any damage. And at this point you can just have a normal game. Your opponent's got 50% extra resources but as they effectively have infinite resources 50% more is no extra. You've also got infinite resources so you're pretty much on a level playing field. So now you can just do what you like. You can kill them with aircraft, you can build loads of titans, whatever you like. Just make sure that you do it quick enough because otherwise your opponent will build a million juggernauts and a million behemoths and it'll just take forever. I decided to choose the mass titan method for this particular go. There is still this one behemoth remaining but it was quite low health and the titans should be able to deal with it with all their missiles and lasers and stuff. Just don't stand too close to them. So, much to my surprise, I found an even sillier way to win this. When I was watching a replay back, I noticed something. There's a beholder in your base. I think this is what gives your enemy vision and what makes them decide to send the behemoths to come and kill you. And then I noticed, you can actually just about see it even though it's invisible. So I thought what I'd do on this playthrough is come and degun it. And then just build like normal. And then what I decided to do was uncloak these beholders to make these behemoths have a target. Which gives them something to attack. Now when they're looking for a new target, there won't be anything they can see. And I had a theory that this might break them somewhat. Let's see what happens. These looks like some mighty confused behemoths. And we're 7 minutes in and they haven't even moved yet. And now we're 10 minutes in and they haven't moved yet. It seems that these behemoths have been completely befuddled by not being able to see my base early on and now I'm just going to sit here and do absolutely nothing. This means you can just do whatever you want for as long as you want and then win the game how you like. I chose to build a ridiculous base. It looks like the behemoths are still here and we're 23 minutes in now. In fact the enemy's actually built two juggernauts at this point and the behemoths still haven't moved. But they have built some more behemoths. And finally, at 30 minutes in, after being provoked by me building in the middle, the behemoths finally decide to show their faces. Granted, there's eight of them now, but hey, that was an interesting turn up. It was nice in the end, because I did get to test out my silly base against some behemoths. But hey... There's only one way to end a game like this. Now here's something you might not know. No matter how many missiles are stored in a particular anti-nuke, they can only handle between 4 and 6 nukes at once depending on the range they are from the nuclear launcher. This means if you've got 16 missiles but someone decides to launch 10 nukes at you at once, 
you're only going to shoot down four or five of them. This is generally bad. And there you go, three different ways to complete TikTok. One smart, one dumb, and one really dumb. Hi there, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button. And if you've got any questions or thoughts, then leave them in a comment below or on the Discord. And as usual, if you want to see more of this sort of thing, then subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you back soon.